We all have our own idea of paradise, and if you're like us, it probably has something to do with fishing, beaches, and the best of the best. Today, the best pieces of paradise lie further than we can fathom, unless you have the right tool to do the job. Lucky for us, we're equipped with a Contender 39 ST, a high horsepower, hardcore fishing boat that will serve as our home for the next 24 hours. So we just checked in to the Dry Tortugas. You gotta get a boating permit before you do anything here. Mm -hmm. And Clay took care of that. As soon as your boat enters the park, mm -hmm. you have to come here and get a boat permit first before anything. Mm -hmm. So we made sure to do that. Now there is a lot of areas in the park where you're not even allowed to fish, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to anchor. Yeah. So what we're gonna do so you can see we have the fort right behind us, which is absolutely beautiful and it crazy. Is. We have actually two videos where we visit the fort. So I don't know if we're gonna be doing that today, but we're gonna head out and we're gonna start bottom fishing. Mm -hmm. Dry Tortugas has some of the best bottom fishing you can experience in all of the Florida Keys, in the waters, the colors, the clarity, you can't beat it. So just in case we have somebody watching that isn't really too familiar with boats and fishing, right now we're looking at our sonar and this is how we track bottom. This is how we track fish. We see what's down there visually from the actual sonar projecting down. And right now it is absolutely lit. And when I mean lit, it's lit up with distortion. And that's what we're looking for. That's why you come here to the Dry Tortugas because this place is pristine. It's untouched, it's remote. There is absolutely nobody out here and there's very high potential that you could come to a spot that has never been fished before. So, every single time you drop a bait, you're hooked up. Oh, Woo! yo, there he is, you, you got already him. You know this is a nice fish right now, baby. 70 feet of water. Woo! Been sitting here for a little while, it's been taking some time. But you know when it's sticking like that, it's a grouper, baby. <laughs> 170 miles later. Ooh, Woo! Ooh, ooh. That is big, whatever it is. Just gotta keep them on. That's the biggest thing. I know, and I'm hoping that these sharks are good. Ah! And they're Come staying on, away. Come on, baby. Come on. That's definitely a grouper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're gonna be eating good tonight, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice. So we don't recommend this, but Clay and I did not bring any meat Woo! on the boat. Woo! Big old red grouper. First fish of the trip. But I gotta tell you, they gotta be loaded down there, man. We gotta drop down another bait. Night, night. You gonna get them or what? I am, I'm just. Or are you gonna give them to the hole? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get them. <laughs> Come on, we didn't bring no food out here. I mean, I know. We got some boiled eggs and Lunchables, but <laughs> this is our food. This is what we are going to be eating I got all now. weekend. Oh yeah. And a red grouper. Oh, he's I'm big. assuming it is. He's a big boy. Sounds fantastic. Mutton. Woo! Woo! Good job, girl. Got a nice mutton. That's a mutton that you catch on a wreck, Stephanie. That thing is massive. That is a big boy right Good there. Good job. I was thinking Woo! he was. I was thinking he was a grouper. There's so many of these fish down here, so there's a lot more competition when it comes to food. Yeah. So when they see food down there, they know I gotta eat. Yeah. And I don't care about that weight or how short that leader is, but that is so cool. It is cool. That is a beast of a mutton. That's what I call so far a great fishing trip. Oh yeah. It's starting to look like a good looking box right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I think yep. someone's got it. Does someone got someone's it? Someone's got it. He's trying so hard to get in that hole, man. He's trying so hard. I think he's in there. Nope, 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 nope. You got him? Yeah. 
Seems he's, like a big one. Yeah, he's massive. He's bigger than the red I just caught. Really? Yeah. It's fighting hard? Yeah, but the, the crazy thing is he took a really hard run, almost kind of fighting like a mutton. Really? Yeah, but it feels like he's going into the hole. Well, he's been in there a couple times. I was able to turn his face and get him out. This is so cool. There ain't a fish you catch out here that's small either. That's what's so cool. Everything out here is just massive. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's what? acting weird. He's almost feeling like there's like a shark after him. Oh, nice Another big red. red. This thing is bigger than the last one. What? Oh my gosh. Look <laughs> at the size Look at the of that. This one's pretty close to the other one, but still a massive red. But we're using a 60 pound leader. Realistically, we could even bump up to an 80, but back at home we use 30 and 40, but here you have to use the 60 because these fish are just so much bigger and you got to be able to gain on them. So we've been using Ooh. squid and ballyhoo. They both seem to be working just as well. Everything's dead. That's what's nice. You don't necessarily need live bait. Live bait would be better. It would it work would. a little bit better. But we're getting the bite without it, so yep. we save time. And, and whatever what this else? is, is definitely a keeper. But I say we definitely call it a day after this. Oh, Big there red, we baby. Go. Nice. nice red. These groupers are so big, there's seriously no reason to catch more or keep more. Nice. Woo. Good job, girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, Clay. I say let's go back, fillet them and start cooking because I'm hungry. I'll tell you what, that beach sounds nice, right? Oh yeah. Let's go check it out. So we just made it to Garden Key, AKA Fort Jefferson. But the biggest thing is now we gotta decide what we wanna eat for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what are you feeling? What should we pull out of the fridge? Grouper or snapper? Oh, well, we've got three grouper, one snapper. Let's get a grouper out. But right now, we're just tied up to Garden Key. This is where the ferry comes, where they drop everybody off. They run ferries back and forth for people that want to come here and visit for the day. Also, a seaplane. We're allowed to park here for right now, but we're not allowed to stay here overnight. And that right there is actually where we're going to be staying, where all these boats are parked at. There's a lot of places you're not allowed to anchor here in the Dry Tortugas, but this is one area that you can anchor at. So as we were pulling up, we made some friends. We're gonna hook some of the campers up with some fresh grouper here, because we got more than enough, but some interesting information that we just figured out. You are allowed to throw the carcasses in the water. However, you wanna make sure that everything you throw in the water sinks so that way the pelicans can't get a hold of it reason why you don't want the pelicans to get a hold of it say they were to get a very big bone they're not used to eating fish with bones this big they can get those bones stuck in their throat and i'm sure you guys probably know the rest but that's something to keep in mind if you guys are ever here filleting in the tortugas so grateful that I'm here right now. I'm gonna watch the sunset from this beach and it is absolutely gorgeous and I would miss it if I were not camping here because we would- Heading back yeah, on the boat. Yeah, we would be heading back by now and we would miss this beautiful sunset. That's the problem. It's just you come here and sometimes it could take you around two hours to get here by boat and then another two hours back to Key West and that's four hours out of your day. And then it's like you want to see the fort, you want to fish, you want to hit the beaches, and you can't do it all in one no, day. No, you can't. So the fact that we're here for two and a half days, I think, is absolutely perfect. Last seaplane's heading out, taking everybody out of here. Sun setting, about to make some grouper. I gotta tell you, I'm really, really excited. So we are pulling away from the fort for the night. We're gonna anchor up and get our home set up. We're gonna cover the entire front of the boat, put up an air mattress. Look at that car. Never seen him toss like that. He was super excited. <laughs> so, here's our kitchen. Yep. 
kitchen for the night. So what I'm gonna do is I kept it really simple for today. Is I just brought some Old Bay blackening season. Like always. Seasoning, yeah, exactly, like always. And we're just gonna go ahead and just grill it. And then afterwards, we're gonna have a salad with it. So while our fish is cooking, <laughs> Clay is setting everything up for us to sleep. So this is actually our boat cover. When the boat's up on the trailer, this is what we use to cover it with and the cover actually splits in two at the console and it straps to the t-top so we're going to use it right now to cover the entire front of the boat what's up mtv welcome to my crib <laughs> this is my air mattress this is my my home my home my front room in the back we got the kitchen <laughs> I would definitely have to say once we sat down to eat and actually relaxed, that's where it all kind of hit me. Yeah, same here. Especially like there's not a sound. Nothing. All right, well we got everything all put away. About to power down the lights. Stephanie is looking all nice and cozy up in here. But I think at this point we're gonna put down the camera, get a good night rest. See you guys in the morning. At this point, we've spent 24 hours in the Dry Tortugas, which has allowed us to experience this place in ways we can never imagine. As the island comes to life, the beauty emerges, something we would have never been able to experience without an overnight trip. As the sun rises higher, the colors begin to emerge, one of the many reasons why we fell in love with the Dry Tortugas. However, this time it's different. We have nowhere to go and nowhere to be, as there's no rush back to Key West. Sure, you could take the ferry or a seaplane, stay a couple nights on Garden Key and go back, but the freedom and the experience you gain going by boat is truly the way to experience the dry Tortugas. Now, what's interesting about the Tortugas is this is where everything begins. All the groupers, all the snappers, they all breed here. Yeah, there's so, a huge spawn here in like a designated area where they don't even let you stop at. Exactly, you're not even allowed through. to stop your boat. And what happens is, is when those fish free, the Gulf Stream current carries everything up to the north, all the way up the whole Florida Keys reef system. So it's very important that you respect the dry tortugas because this place is what makes the Florida Keys what it is from a fishing standpoint. And that's a big reason why people come to the Florida Keys and that's a big reason why people live in the Florida Keys. Now, for us, we hope you guys have enjoyed this entire trip, but until next week, we'll see you guys then. We'll see you guys.